San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live. Winding down day one of the keynote coming up shortly here at Oracle Open World Live in San Francisco on Howard Street. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Two of my co host Brian Gracie, big data cloud analyst, overall analyst at wikibon.com. And our next guest is Siddharth Agarwal, Vice President of Product Management and Strategy at Oracle. Um, Pass, middleware, IoT, mobile. <laughs> Welcome to theCUBE. Hi. Siddharth, we talk about PaaS with Intergy in depth, so we'll let that kind of stay out there, but IoT is hot and mobile, so I got to ask you, um, IoT as a platform is pretty hard to do, but there's a lot of applications out there right now. Yeah, yeah. Give us the update on what's hot with IoT. Well, with IoT, one of the key things is that devices are producing a ton of data, and very small amount of that data is actually being acted upon. So what we're doing is, one, we're helping you do decisioning really close to the device data, and two, we're being able to stream that data up into the cloud where you can do real-time analytics against the cloud. And one of the key differentiators that we have is that we pre-built integrations into the on-premise applications, such as JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, eBusiness Suite, et cetera, where you're wanting to make sure that the insight that you got from the analytics piece from IoT can actually do something in those applications. So for example, when a generator is failing in the field, it actually creates a service ticket in the service cloud so it's not just on-premise, but also SaaS applications, and then that is able to push a mobile notification to a field service rep who's in the field, and he goes and fixes that uh, generator in the field. So what's the key differentiator then for Oracle? What, how would you boil it down? Well, one is that we, are, we have a huge base with EBS, JD Edwards, et cetera, so when you look at the discrete manufacturing space, and we look at logistics and transportation, we know the apps, and we've created those pre-built integrations into the apps. The other thing is, IoT is not just about one particular cloud service. It's about integrations, it's about mobile, it's about IoT altogether. So we've actually made all of our cloud services work together to deliver, deliver an IoT solution. Right. Yeah. Right. And then finally the SaaS applications, connecting you know, into the SaaS applications, both Oracle and non-Oracle SaaS applications by default. Like the service ticket example I gave uh, for the Oracle Service Cloud. Yeah, I mean mobile mobile apps. If I'm building them from scratch, yeah, not super compli complicated to get used out of the out of the app store. When I talk about enterprise apps, it's it's am I extending functionality? Do I give you the same interface? What are the big challenges for mobile developers, especially like you said in the enterprise right. and extending to right. enterprise applications? Yeah, for mobile developers, I mean one of the things is that they have to enable integrations rapidly against backend applications, right? So they have to be able to integrate to e-business or they have to be able to integrate the service cloud because the real value resides in those backend applications. Any enterprise application has to be able to connect to the backend. So that's one challenge. Another challenge is the speed of releases that they have to do. We all get you know, updates to our mobile phones. Every once a week, once a month. Once a week, yeah. One, yeah, once a week, absolutely. So they have to now have a very robust release cycle where they can't afford for the apps to crash, but they have to be able to release really fast, right? And the last thing is they need to understand what's going on inside the mobile application itself, how is it being used, right? Because then they can work with the user community to change the application based on what's getting used and what's not getting used. Yeah. And, you, and you guys feel like you can you can walk people through greenfield applications, sort of API gateways, integration, visibility, you feel like you've got that complete suite for mobile developers? Yeah, I think what, what differentiates us is, you know, when the first generation of mobile applications were built, they were built without the perspective of all the various form factors, devices that are out there, uh, all the types of integration, et cetera, that is needed, uh, the location data that people need to use, payment services, et cetera. Now, we're providing a mobile backend as a service where you can have notifications taken care of for you. You can have sync, you know, you can uh, put data offline. So for example, we have a customer of ours in India, Larson and Tubro Finance, where they have 5,000 sales reps that go into remote villages. And in these villages, they are filling out forms for loans. This is all paper-based, and then they come back and enter it. With us, they started building this application, and in two months, they built the application so the sales reps go out there, they fill in on the tablet device, it stores all the data on the tablet device, and then it comes back into the, uh, uh, you know, uh, when they come back into Wi-Fi mode, it connects. 
So we're giving you the ability to do analytics inside the device also. So those are some Workflow, of the differentiators. different modes, all those yes. things, yeah. Yes. So, so IoT can be a daunting task. How do people get started? What's your advice? How would you share, knowing what you know, being the product management Absolutely. leader? Yeah, I think that you, know, you want to get to value within zero to three months, not have a six, nine, 12 month cycle. So the first thing that people should focus on is, in the manufacturing industry, for example, how do you do remote monitoring of what's happening to those devices that are out there? So the generator set, how do you know that that generator set is failing even though it hasn't failed yet, right? So one is getting that, you know, just monitoring of those assets and management of these assets. The next phase of it can be, how do I get a little bit more predictive uh, where I'm being able to say, hey, it's about to fail, how do I tell the field service rep to go and get that taken care of? Siddharth, I want to ask you one final question. I know we're tight on time because the keynote's coming up. We're going to be kicking over to the live feed, certainly on the, uh, to the stage and also to Oracle around the world. Uh, final question for you is, hey, you know what? Thanks, Oracle. I can build my own IoT platform. Sure. I'm going to build my own app, and that's the new DevOps mantra. I'm going to, I got my own app, I'm going to build my own infrastructure. Right, right. It sounds really easy if you're a developer. Mm -hmm. What's the trade-offs? Because there's going to be a build your own. Right. I go to Amazon, I can do this stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the hidden cost? What to watch out for? What can you share sure. as hotspots for someone to say, hey, whoa, right. be careful? Now, I think if you build the app yourself, first of all, you have to be able to get the data from the device that is coming in at a tremendous rate into some consolidated platform. We know how to get data into a platform in a very fast manner. Two, you have to be able to do analytics on this huge base of data. Today only 1% of the IoT generated data is actually being acted upon. So we know how to do analytics on the data. Three, you have to do real-time decisioning. So as the data is coming in, in real time, you have to say, hey, the temperature on that refrigeration uh, equipment on the truck is going up, and so the meat is going to spoil. Let's tell the guy driving the truck right there. Right? So, so those are some of the things, and then obviously the application integration on the back end. So I, IoT is the iceberg, you can't see most of it below, that's where you guys are at in value, that's the big challenge of it. Sure, I would say that you know uh, uh, we can solve the problem for you easily, yes. Gotcha. Okay, we got the keynote coming up, thanks so much, we had to cut this short. We are live here at Howard Street getting ready for the keynote. Our next segment, we're going to be we're going to be pre-gaming, quick analysis, leading into the Larry Ellison keynote, always my favorite part of Oracle Open World. <laughs> it's going to be entertaining, it's going to be, going to be gangbusters. We're looking forward to it. We'll be right back more after this short break. Go to siliconangle.tv and go to crowdchat.net, says OOW15. Join the conversation with the Cube team. We'll be right back with more after this short break.